Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with the Fabric Patch in Ephrata, Washington. You can find us at fabricpatch.net. And today I am going to show you how to make wood pile. Wood pile is a fantastic pattern. It'll be something that you'll use again and again and again and again because it is fast, super simple, an opportunity to use up all of those really cool fabrics that you don't know, that you don't want to cut up or you're not sure how to use. And best of all, it's a great quilt to be able to personalize in terms of size and in terms of blocks. So let's get started. My daughter and I have owned and operated a busy quilt shop in Washington State for over 20 years. We have a retreat center, an active YouTube channel, and a large pattern line featuring our creations. My two sons work on machines. One daughter-in-law is our videographer and the other is a long-arm quilter. We are a family that love each other, we laugh together, and every once in a while we get some work done. We have a crew that are saints for their efforts at keeping us on track. Thanks for joining us on our wild ride. Okay, so this is your woodpile pattern and it is available as an immediate download or there's a printed copy. It's just $4.99. It's just a nice, simple, easy, easy to follow pattern. All you need is seven half yard cuts. And of those seven half yard cuts, whenever we put one together, it is fabrics that you just kind of don't want to cut up, fabrics that are really telling their own story. If there's something that has kind of a lot going on or it's just perfect colors, or again, when you have large pieces in a quilt, that's what makes it go together super, super fast. So sometimes what we'll do when we put together a kit or when we make a, uh, wood pile pattern, it's because we have a panel that we want to use or we have some orphan blocks that we want to use. I know you guys have seen this block a lot, but it's just one of those really good examples. If you're making a, uh, a quilt for a graduate or a t-shirt quilt for somebody, this is kind of one of those fun things because all you need to do with any t-shirt, just add your fusible interfacing to stabilize it, cut it to the size that you want, and this would be one of those optional quilt fat patterns for t-shirt blocks or what we call orphan blocks. And orphan blocks, again, just like when we put together the two bits quilt, that might be something that you started a project, you loved the blocks, you maybe got five or six of them done and you thought, oh, I am not gonna fit, make all 20 of these blocks, I'm done. And that way you can use up the rest of that fabric, use those blocks, put them together in a wood pile. So the reason we called it wood pile is because everything is kind of stacked in nice, neat little rows. The only tricky part, if you call it that, is in the cutting. And the cutting is super simple. It's just some strips and some blocks. So let's go ahead and get to the cutting. I'm gonna set this aside and show you that this is what we have picked out. We have six of these half yard cuts, oh seven. We have seven half yard cuts of some coordinating fabric. And then we have one panel. I'm gonna cut the panel last because if you didn't have a panel um, with what you were making, I'm gonna show you how to do it and then I'll show you how to add orphan blocks or a panel afterwards. All right, so all you're gonna do is you're going to take your half yard of fabric and when you open up your half yard of fabric, of course what you see is you have salvage to salvage, here's your fold and you've got 18 inches by 42 inches. So. People ask us all the time, do we pre-wash our fabric? I do not pre-wash my fabric. The reason that I don't is because I use very good quality, quilt store quality fabric. So it's going to shrink just a tiny bit and uniformly. The other thing is that it all has a little bit of a stain guard and a sun protectant on it. And I don't necessarily want to um, wash that off so so i don't pre-wash i cut sew it all and then i'm good to go so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut this into eight and a half inch strips now typically i don't use the mat to measure i always use my ruler to measure my strips but if the ruler that you have is a six inch wide by 24 inch, then it's kind of difficult to use your ruler to measure a 
an eight and a half inch section. There are some ways to use your square up ruler to be able to make a difference and I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. Or if you do feel comfortable using your mat, you can go ahead and do that. I just tend to not do that because I feel personally for me, it's just not quite as accurate. All right, let me find my glasses. What I'm gonna start with is I'm going to start with giving myself a nice straight edge. I'm actually gonna walk around the other side of the table. Cut that off. And then, well, again, if you want to use your mat, you can measure that over there. But what I do, since I'm using a panel, I'm going to be using my square up ruler anyway to do some fussy cutting. So what I'm gonna do is since I'm cutting this eight and a half, this is my one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I just need two and a half inches. I'm gonna line that up right on my edge. This is a 12 and a half inch square up ruler, so I have one, two and a half. So I have that right in the center. I'm going to butt this right up against it. And here I am, eight and a half inches. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna line that up. One, two and a half. Put that up against it. And you can see out of your half yard cut, you have very little waste. You just have enough so that you're able to square everything up because you're using 17 inches out of that 18 inches. Now, I'm going to turn and I'm going to set one of these aside for a second. The other one, I'm going to cut into a 40 inch section. And what will happen is this piece of fabric is 42 inches, right? From <clears throat> salvage to salvage is 42. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go ahead, I can keep using my mat. Again, if that's what you're doing, if you wanna use your mat and count over 20, you can go ahead and do that or use your ruler. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Let's just double check. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 20. It's that whole thing, right? Measure twice, cut once. I feel pretty comfortable that this now is a 40 inch section. And it gives you a little bit of room here because we never really know what we have in salvage. They guarantee that we have 42 inches of usable space, but in this particular one, it looks like it's probably a 45 inch fabric. But so those of you that do pre-wash, you'll be fine. You certainly have enough that you have your 40 inch section here. All right, so I've cut my 40 inch piece. I'm gonna set this aside. This one, what I'm going to do is, cut off my salvages. And then what I'm cutting is eight and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna grab my square up ruler again. And where am I? Let's see, I'm gonna do it this way. So I am at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. And in cutting this, this gives me two of them, one, two. 
and I need a third one. And of course, all of your rulers are measured and they say eight and a half. If we look here, we can see that it says eight and a half. But sometimes I read a ruler backwards. I'll have it flipped over the other way. So even though I can see what it says, I always just double check by counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. Okay, so these are my blocks. This is my row. This we're going to use at the end and cut this up for a pieced border. So I'm going to set this one aside. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut my other pieces exactly the same way as this. that I'm going to be cutting up. This is that spot where um, I am going to cut up these blocks in this panel, but again, if you had pieced blocks that you've made, some fussy cutting of some really cool fabric that you have, a large print, uh, t-shirt blocks, whatever. So for me, I'm going to be cutting these up. So when you're fussy cutting something, um, what you do is you take your ruler, we've done this before in a couple of other um, quilt blocks, the easiest thing to do is to mark your ruler. So if I'm cutting an eight and a half inch square, which is what the pattern calls for, I'm going to count over my eight and a half inches, which is right here. Let me just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. This is that wet erase marker. We use our wet erase marker all the time. We've done it in the tri-dazzle and all kinds of stuff because um, if I rub up against that mark or if I flip it over and it rubs up against my fabric, it's not going to come off. It's not going to come off on the fabric. It's not going to come off on the ruler. I have to actually either wet my finger or take a wet paper towel to get that mark off. But it comes off quickly, cleanly, and easily. So I'm going to mark eight and a half there eight and a half here and I'm going to come over to my corner and mark it here. So now when I go to do my fussy cutting I'm going to put this around my panel because you'd think that this square would be printed perfectly and maybe it's either going to be a perfect eight and a half inches here and eight and a half inches here. It's not. 
This is kind of fluid. It kind of runs through a little printing um, process, and so it can move ever so slightly. And so you'll see that as you put this down, sometimes you have to make a decision. And if you look, if you can, I'm not sure if you can see through the ruler or not, but you can see I have to decide to cut off some of the blue down here, or I would have to cut off some of it up here. I also will have little bits of this dark charcoal on both sides. The other thing that I tend to watch for is where that quarter inch seam allowance is, because what's gonna happen is this tiny little bit, there's just going to be an eighth of it on this side and an eighth of it on this side. So even though there'll be a little bit of that charcoal gray on both sides, you'll never see this in the finished quilt. So that's why it's nice when you're looking at what you're gonna cut, you can see the whole thing, <coughs> the whole thing at once. I can see exactly where my block is going to be. And so once I've made that decision on what I'm cutting, then all I have to do is cut across the top, cut across the side and then turn this piece and line it up down here on that corner right on this line right on this line in the corner And there is our eight and a half inch fussy cut block. And again, I've cut off a little there. I have a little bit there, but again, you're not going to see that in the finished quilt. Okay, gonna do another one. Line that up. And again, you can kind of decide what you're gonna cut off. You can see Right here is my quarter inch seam allowance, and so I have, even though I'll have charcoal on both of these sides, I have plenty of fabric. Okay. Sometimes people will ask sometimes about fabric that frays. Um, flannel will tend to fray just a tiny bit more than other fabric and it's just because of the size of the thread that they're using. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's not going to make any difference. We sew that all up. It won't continue to fray. It won't be a problem in your quilt. So if you see that, I never worry about that too much at all. All right, I'm gonna keep cutting all of these up. On this last one that we're cutting, I just want to show you that this particular block has this fun little red border around it. So I know that in looking at this, you can see that here's my eight and a half and here's my eight and a half. So there's no way that these are gonna be in there. You might decide to try to leave some of it in but I also know that these are going to be in the seam allowances. So sometimes it just doesn't really matter. On most of these blocks, I've had to decide what part I'm kind of cutting off. So it's all right. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just, um, you just have to look at it. And 
pay attention to where your seam allowance is going to be because you realize you're going to come in a quarter of an inch from where you've cut all the way around. And so I know that no matter where I am, this little red is not going to show. Also, some of you will ask, what are you going to do with all of these little trimmings? And the answer is, whatever you want. Uh, we are not using them in this particular quilt. So if you want to cut them up into something else, maybe sew them end to end for binding, you could have a couple of different options. All right. So what I have is I have my fussy cut panel blocks that I've cut. I have my eight and a half inch blocks from my yardage that I've cut. And I have my 40 inch sections that I've blocked that I've cut. Now it's time to go ahead and go to the design wall and create our quilt. Okay, so this is the suggested layout of the quilt. So again, I have seven half yards of fabric. I have seven pieces that are 40 inches long and I have 21 blocks that are eight and a half inches. And on the pattern, I give you the diagram. Um, but really, you can do anything you want to. All you want to know is that in every single row, you've got three blocks and one long strip. Three blocks and one long strip. Three blocks and one long strip. So I suggest kind of a layout of where those should go, but you can do anything you want as long as each row is the same length. Does that make sense? So these are your half yard cuts, seven of them. The only other thing that we suggest is a yard and a half. So that you have a little border, you'll take these leftover pieces, cut these into four and a half by seven inch lengths, sew those together and it's the perfect size to go all the way around. And then one more border and you have a very large uh, twin size quilt. That's perfect. I wanna show you two other things about this. One is what if in your half yard cut, you end up with something kind of directional? So I feel like for something like this one or this one, they're kind of directional, but not really. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't make any difference where I left those. But this one, this is the tree piece. So what you can do is cut it into two pieces, put a little seam there so that you end up with your 20 inch length. Your other thing is since it's cut there anyway, it could give you a little bit of a variation if you want to actually you know, just drop that down and put the block in there just to make people really wonder, you know, what you were doing with this quilt. So anyway, either way. Um, so this is the pattern as written, but let me show you what to do with a panel, um, some orphan blocks, uh, t-shirt blocks, something else. So what you can do is just swap these blocks out. So here's some of those panel blocks that we cut. They're still eight and a half inches. And so maybe we wanna take out this one and we're gonna put it in right here. And maybe we want to take out this one. Ooh, and put this one in. We're gonna put it right here. And you can keep now, all that's gonna happen is you are just gonna keep rearranging and rearranging and rearranging and overthinking until you get it the way that you like. I just want to mention that if you have more fabric, a couple of extra half yard cuts, you can of course make the quilt wider, right? If you have extra blocks, and maybe you want to make each row four blocks and one row, 
You can make the quilt longer, right? So there's a lot of variations. You just have to feel comfortable with cutting, comfortable with piecing, and comfortable with math. What I'm gonna do is um, overthink this just a little bit. I'm gonna sew these rows together, and then I'm probably just going to add one border, but we'll see you at the end and we'll see what I end up with. Okay, I, um, I made some decisions and I just wanna kind of show you my progress. So what I decided to do, since I am making this for my six foot four son-in-law, I decided that what I was gonna do with my extra blocks for my panel is I was just gonna make sure that every row had four blocks in it instead of three. So it's just longer. I'm still gonna do all of the borders that I was going to, but I'm just going to make it that eight inches longer. Um, so I've started sewing them together, but I just wanna, and so you can see I've kind of moved a couple things around a little bit, but um, one thing that I wanted to mention is I said, all you do is sew the rows together, it doesn't matter, but it kind of matters a little bit. So you can see that right here, I've got these rows, this row sewn together and this row sewn together and, and it's sewn together here. So you can see that I really do want that to line up and I really do want that to line up because if not, that would, that would show. So if you look at this last one, you can see that I've got three blocks I'm gonna sew together with that row. So same thing, whether I'm going to use my pins or my clips, I'm just going to make sure that those seams all kind of come together. Pretty simple, not a whole lot of fussy piecing. It really does go together fast. And again, I just wanna mention again, the reason I love this panel, so, this pattern so much is because if you have fabric that you really like and it just really looks like that person and you don't really wanna cut it up a lot, you really don't have to. So anyway, I'm gonna keep sewing. Okay, I'm all done. And again, the reason that I really, really like the wood pile pattern is because it's so versatile. Once you understand the construction, you can see how you could actually add, with just a half a yard of fabric, add a whole nother column to make it wider. Or like I did with a panel, I added a whole nother row, another eight inch block on the bottom. So again, my rows are the, the long piece that's 40 inches plus four blocks. And so my quilt, before I added the borders, I ended up with 72 inches for my six foot son-in-law by 56 inches. And by adding a five inch border, I am now 66 by 82, which is perfect for that couch throw quilt for a tall son-in-law. Now, the deal with borders, because um, that's kind of where we're at right now, I am just going to stop with my five inch border. We have some directions for some pieced borders and different things in your pattern, but remember that the whole thing with borders is borders will add color and size. So if you feel like your quilt is the right size, you don't have to add all of those borders. If you feel like it's really just a color issue, add whatever you'd like. Borders are optional. It's a, an opportunity for you to personalize that. And again, that's the last thing about this quilt is that whole opportunity for personalization because any one of these eight and a half inch blocks could be a fussy cut quilt pattern like what I used with the panel. It could be a pieced block, it could be a t-shirt block, it could be a photo block, whatever you'd like. So I hope you've enjoyed making this. My next step now is I'm gonna take it out to my sewing room and I am going to quilt it and give it away as a gift. We're going to show you in the closing credits another one. Um, we have made this pattern with food fabric. It's the perfect size for a college student, so if he doesn't have any money for snack food, at least he'll be warm. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.